I recently came across a post that said, we don't need hundreds of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need millions of people doing zero waste imperfectly. And I think that this same statement can be applied to homesteading. We don't need hundreds of people homesteading perfectly. We need thousands, if not millions of people homesteading imperfectly. Welcome back to Homestead Dreamers. I'm Elena, and if you saw our last video where we gave you a tour of our garage apartment, a lot has changed since then. We've been working really hard over the past two weeks to get ready for drywall, and now we have drywall on the walls, and they are in the process of finishing it. It's super exciting. Now that all the insulation is in the house, things are a lot warmer. So I'm actually gonna take off my headband because it's a lot warmer in here. We have radiant heat flooring downstairs and we've been able to turn that up to about 60 degrees because it's able to hold the temperature better with all of the insulation in. But anyways, that's besides the point. I just wanted to address the fact that a lot has changed. But today I really wanna talk about getting started before you're ready. And I actually wrote some notes for this video. I don't normally do this, but there's a lot of things that I wanna cover and I really don't wanna forget anything that I wanted to talk about. A lot of times when we are starting a new hobby, we wait until we have the perfect moment to get started. And it's interesting because we've never really had anyone explicitly state to us, you have to meet X, Y, and Z in order to get started, but it's almost like a vision or an idea or goal that we've set for ourselves that we need to hit some certain milestone in order to get started. I think a lot of times when it comes to homesteading, a lot of us wait for that perfect moment to get started or to start a new part of that homesteading journey. So for example, if you are living in an apartment or maybe you live in a house with a small outdoor patio, you might feel like you need to wait until you buy land in order to get started. But I'm here today to tell you now that you should not wait a moment longer and that you should get started now. I can relate a lot right now to the feelings of wanting to do homesteading things, but living in a small space. With living in an RV, we really don't have that much space and we do have a lot of land, but it is winter right now. And so there's not a ton that I can do outside. For example, with our onion seed starts, I actually started those and placed them in the shower of the RV to germinate. I needed a space that was warm enough for them to germinate, but the house at that point in time did not have all the insulation in, it didn't have any drywall, and the temperatures in here were about 50 degrees max. So I had to make do with what we had, and I ended up putting those seed starts in the shower. Since then, I have moved them into this space, but the idea is that I can relate to those feelings of maybe not having enough space to get started. Homesteading is much more than just growing your own food or raising animals. There are a lot of skills that you can start learning now, even if you have no plans to start growing outdoors anytime soon. So the first thing that you can start doing now is eating seasonally. This is so helpful if you are planning to eventually grow a lot of food for your family and hopefully grow enough for the entire year. It's important to realize that different fruits and veggies are available during different seasons. The grocery store makes it seem like everything is available at all times of year, but depending on where you live, that really is not the case. And so if you can learn to eat seasonally now you'll be one step ahead when you go to actually plant your garden outdoors. If you are unsure about what is available in your region at what times, I highly encourage you to start frequently going to farmer's markets because there they are going to be selling seasonal produce. Then you can get an idea of what's available to you. You can support a local farmer in the process and you can then learn how to cook that food accordingly. 
Another way to kind of learn about what foods are available in your region at certain times is to sign up for what's called a CSA. This stands for Community Supported Agriculture. So a lot of farmers or even homesteaders will offer CSA programs where you can sign up and you basically pay a membership or a subscription fee to get fresh fruits and veggies throughout the year. It depends on the CSA and who's farming and who's offering it, but it may only be veggies. It may be veggies, fruits, and meat. It just depends. You'll have to look at what's available in your area. If you are someone who's interested in eventually getting into flower farming and maybe doing some cut flowers, you can also sign up for flower CSAs. This is something that seems really fun to me. I haven't really done it because there's not one that's super close to me. I know of one farmer who does it and she's about 25 to 30 minutes from me. So it's kind of inconvenient and out of the way to like go pick up the flowers but that is another option as well. A skill that kind of goes hand in hand with eating seasonally is also just learning how to cook. This is learning all the basics, like how to prepare things, different ways to prepare things, how to effectively chop things. Those skills become invaluable once you start growing your own food you will end up having a ton of different produce. And if you don't know what to do with it, it might end up in the compost bin. So you wanna avoid that. And one way you can do that is by figuring out what kind of meals you and your family like with all sorts of different vegetables. I would also encourage you to explore different ways to prepare each vegetable. So for example, if we are growing broccoli, you want to steam it, roast it, put it in casseroles, figure out different ways that you can use it because if you just prepare it the same way every single time, your family may get bored of it. And this is a great time now to start experimenting with that and trying out different recipes. Two skills I don't think we talk enough about with regards to homesteading are carpentry and DIY repairs. These two skills are invaluable when you are trying to start a homestead on a budget. If you plan to build raised garden beds, a greenhouse, chicken coops, having the ability to build things yourself is going to save you a lot of money. I am fortunate to have a fiance who absolutely loves building things and has taught me a lot of those skills, but this is something that you can start learning now even without land. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I live in an apartment. I don't really have the space to be building a table or a shoot rack or something to learn those skills or even the tools to do it. So I would recommend that you go check out a local community college and see if they have any courses that you could take in person. I think the best way to learn carpentry skills is in person in a class. So definitely check that out while you can. If you don't have anything available to you, another thing would be to tag along with a friend who is really good at carpentry. Maybe you have a coworker who's doing some renovation projects or maybe they are building a table or something. Go ask them if you can be a part of their project because that's another great way to learn hands-on is by just helping with someone else's project. There are a lot of different benefits of learning carpentry skills now. And one of those benefits is that you will learn the tools that you have available to you and how to use them. It's important that you feel comfortable using these tools and know the different applications in which you can use them so that whenever you are building things from scratch, you can kind of use that knowledge to help you problem solve and come up with a plan to build something that is effective. <laughs> Another skill that kind of goes hand in hand with this is the ability to DIY projects and repair things. There's gonna be a lot of times whenever you build something with homesteading that at some point in time, you realize it's not as effective as you want it to be, or maybe you used recycled materials and now they're kind of falling apart. So you need to troubleshoot and fix something that is now broken. This is something that has kind of been ingrained in Alex and I because we studied engineering. So it's this ability to problem solve, kind of find the root cause of an issue and then improve upon it going forward. A good way to start learning these skills is that the next time something breaks in your home, you should try to fix it yourself. So maybe you need to fix a door hinge or something small like that. Do it yourself rather than hiring someone else. If it's something where you don't feel comfortable 
fixing it yourself, like an electrical thing where you want to replace a light fixture or do something like that, go ahead and hire that out. But maybe whenever you hire a professional, ask them questions while they're there, just start learning and picking up things as you go along. I can tell you that this skill set is invaluable and it's going to save you a lot of money on your homestead in the long run. So if you can learn how to problem solve and fix things, it's going to be really beneficial, especially if you think you may eventually have a large enough piece of land where you may have equipment, those costs can add up really fast if you need to hire someone to fix things. So even doing things on your own car, like changing the oil, replacing the brakes and rotors, or replacing headlights, you have to start somewhere and that is a great place to start. I mentioned that carpentry and DIY skills aren't really mentioned a ton with regards to homesteading. And I think it's partially because of the content that I am consuming. I am primarily watching females do homesteading things. So they're typically focused on taking care of the animals and growing vegetables and growing flowers. And then their husband or significant other is the one who is doing all of the building and repairs. But I think as a female, I think it is very valuable to have those skill sets as well. In the case that you are doing a project for yourself, or maybe your husband is busy at work and you need to fix something, it's really valuable to have those skills. And I know that this can be intimidating. So that's why I say, if you can find someone that's already working on these projects and kind of tag along and learn from them, it's a little less scary than just buying a woodworking plan online and trying to build something from scratch. So I kind of have a built in house mentor who is Alex, my fiance. I'm very lucky and fortunate to have someone who's so passionate and interested in building to teach me the skills. But even then, when he's teaching me some of these skills, I have to slow down his pace because he's used to doing things really quickly and he'll tell me, well, this should only take you 10 minutes and it ends up taking me about 30 minutes to an hour. So I kind of have to constantly remind him that I am not at the same level that he is with carpentry and that it's gonna take me a while to get there. So as we get into more of the finished projects within our home, I am hoping to gain those skills even more and to be more confident in those skills. And I hopefully will be able to show you guys some of those homesteading related carpentry projects down the road. Uh, but right now I am still very much a beginner. Let's talk about a few of the things that you can start growing now that can prepare you for whenever you have more space to grow outdoors. So two of those things are microgreens and mushrooms. I personally have not tried growing microgreens yet, but I have grown fodder for our chickens. It's a very similar process and I do have plans to grow microgreens. I just haven't had a chance to order seeds yet. The second thing is mushrooms. And this is something that we have personally been experimenting with growing this winter. The first time we came across a lot of challenges and we failed miserably. I wouldn't say we failed miserably, but we definitely failed. But I feel like from those failures, we learned even more than if we were to have just grown them right the first time. I feel like there is a huge blessing that can come from failures and that's that you end up learning a lot more than if you were to be successful that first time. So with mushrooms, you can actually just grow them in trays and you don't really need artificial lights or anything. You can grow them with ambient light. So that's definitely something to look into if you enjoy having mushrooms in your diet, you can definitely try growing your own. At the beginning of this video, you probably saw me turn on a propane burner and put a canning pot on top. That canning pot is actually full of coconut core and coffee grounds. I'm using that as my substrate to grow mushrooms. And the first step in growing mushrooms is to prepare the substrate by pasteurizing it. So I have it in that canning pot full of water and it's gonna be boiling at about 190 for two hours. And then once that's done, it is pasteurized and I can start mixing in my spawn to then grow the mushrooms. So that's the first step. And so that's kind of why I started this video with that because that is something that you can start doing now is 
growing mushrooms indoors. Along those same lines, you can definitely start seeds indoors now, even if you have nowhere to plant them outdoors. There is so much to learn with seed starting that it can feel really overwhelming to do that when you first get started on top of learning how to garden outdoors. So if you can learn how to seed start indoors now, then you would be that much further ahead when you go to plant outdoors. And you might be wondering, okay, well, what am I gonna do with all those seed starts once I have the plants ready to go outdoors? You could just give them to people. You could give them to coworkers, family members, friends, people who actually have a little bit of land to maybe plant some things outdoors. Or maybe you could even ask one of your friends or family members if you could start a little garden at their house. Or maybe work would let you start a garden there. Or a community garden could pop up from your interest in gardening. So I think that starting seeds indoors is totally viable even if you don't have necessarily a place to grow outdoors yet. There's a really popular saying out there that says luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And that's exactly what I want you to do right now, is I want you to start preparing for when you have the opportunity to purchase the land, to rent land, to do all those things, to maybe even expand your homestead, to have the finances to do that. I want you to start preparing for that now because I strongly believe this statement to be true. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. This is exactly what happened with Alex and I. I haven't talked about this yet on this channel, but Alex and I left our corporate jobs to pursue our passions of sharing about homesteading and building last year, and it took us three and a half years to get there. We had been preparing and preparing and preparing for an opportunity to come to allow us to take the leap. And that happened last year. And so I just strongly believe in this statement that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And so I need you to start preparing now. Trust me, the opportunity will come. You need to prepare now for that time and get excited and start dreaming about what you want that future to look like. Kind of along that same topic is the idea of manifesting your reality. And I also believe this to be true. I know this may seem like a little woo for some people, but I think that if you envision your future and you think about that every single day and that kind of motivates you to make small changes in your life to reach that goal every single day, I think it's almost inevitable that you will reach that goal. And I may be a little bit crazy for saying this, but I just, I know that a lot of other people have used this same technique of like manifesting things into reality. Some people that we follow and look up to will actually journal what they want their future to look like. And they'll do that like every day or maybe every week. And then they're slowly working towards those goals and eventually reach the goal. So I just think there's a lot of power in putting positive energy behind your ideas or your goals or your dreams. That's something that's kind of related to this, but not 100% related. I just think that's something valuable to start doing now is to start kind of dreaming up what you want that future to look like for you and to start slowly working towards that. Another thing is that there was a quote that I heard on a podcast like six years ago where they said, make 1% progress every single day. 1% is only 15 minutes of your day. And if you can commit to that, over time, all of that small progress will add up to big change. So maybe you're not someone who likes to manifest or envision your future reality, but you do have goals. Just try to get 1% better with that goal every single day. That's just another little fun piece of advice that I have kind of implemented in my own life that I have found made a big difference. Before we jump back into skills that you can start learning now, even without land, I just wanna mention that I did write a blog post for Bootstrap Farmer, it's on their website, that kind of outlines a bunch of different things that you can learn, some things that we have talked about here. So I will link that below and above, and you can go visit that blog post whenever you need to, to kind of like refer back to it, remember what I said, and it kind of outlines most of the things that we talked about here. Another thing that you can start doing now that is valuable as a homesteader is you can start composting. And there's a common misconception that you need to compost outdoors, but there's actually a process where you can compost indoors called vermicomposting, and it's the process of composting with worms. 
I know that this sounds a little bit creepy and weird, but you can actually compost with worms in a pre-made bin or a bucket system that you DIY yourself. I've actually built my own vermicomposting system using buckets. I got the buckets for free from a local ice cream shop. I've heard that you can get free buckets from like Walmart bakeries or grocery bakeries. I have not tested this out myself. I have not tried it. But if you do have a local ice cream shop, ask them and see if you can get any for free. I made my buckets a couple years ago and I haven't done anything with it since then because we've just been so busy, but it is something that I wanna get back into in the future. And I wanted to mention on here because it's something that you can start doing now. Another thing you can start learning now is the different ways to preserve food. You can water bath can, pressure can, dehydrate things, freeze dry things. There are a multitude of different ways of preserving and it is definitely possible to start doing that now even when you aren't growing your own food. You can look for produce or fruit that's on discount at the grocery store. Some people have like large discount grocery stores near them where they can go and buy stuff in bulk. Go take advantage of that buy stuff in bulk and then process it, learn the skills now. So maybe you go there and they have a ton of strawberries on sale. You could buy those and make jam and learn that skill. Or maybe you don't wanna buy them from the grocery store, but you can buy them from a local orchard or a farmer's market. Those are things that you can start doing now and experimenting with. I personally only really know how to dehydrate things and water bath can things. So I still need to learn how to pressure can things. And that's something that's on my list, but it's not something that's been a priority for me, um, but it's something that you could start learning now. Now, if you are someone who has a little bit of space where you currently live, maybe it's a patio or maybe you're renting and you talk to your landlord about growing things, you could do container gardening. So maybe your landlord says, hey, yeah, sure, I'm fine with you growing things outdoors in the yard, but I want you to keep them in containers. You could totally do that. So there's multiple different types of containers you can use. You could repurpose something, you could use grow bags, you could buy like terracotta pots, you could build a little like stand up garden bed, you can buy something pre-made, but that's gonna be a little bit more expensive. Uh, there's almost endless options for growing in containers. And this can be really effective and you can grow a lot in a small space. Alex's brother actually lives in Washington, DC and he has a row home and he doesn't really have any like soil space, but he grows a lot of stuff in containers and it's absolutely incredible the amount of food that he produces in his small little space. The couple of garden beds that he does have, Alex built for him. He actually just added a potting shed to his little backyard space and he like grows on a balcony. He takes advantage of all the outdoor space that he has to grow an abundance of vegetables. Every time I'm over there, he's like giving me new seeds or he's showing me peppers that he's fermenting that he grew in his backyard. So he is a prime example of someone who has taken advantage of his current space and is growing what he can in that space. So it's definitely possible. You just gotta figure out what your budget is and what kind of containers you want to grow in. And minute I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what our space looks like now that it's drywalled. But before that, I want to circle back to what I stated at the beginning of this video. We don't need hundreds of people homesteading perfectly. We need thousands, if not millions of people homesteading imperfectly. I think that as a homesteader, sometimes it feels like the actions that you're doing don't really matter in the big scheme of things especially if you are someone who is motivated to homestead for the sustainability aspect. But I need you to know that you are truly making a difference. And if we all sat at home and thought to ourselves, oh, well, I'm not really making a difference, then none of us would do it. But by all of us coming together and saying, I'm going to do one thing differently. I'm gonna start composting or I'm gonna start growing my own tomatoes. Like by doing that alone, you are making a difference and an impact. So for example, if you decide that you are going to compost, all of your food waste that's going in that compost bin is not going to a landfill. That's less food that is going to the landfill. 
If you decide to start a garden and start growing organically, not only are you able to produce healthy food for your family, but you are helping the soil infrastructure and helping microorganisms thrive. If you decide to start bringing some of your tomatoes to work and sharing them with your coworkers, you're now opening their eyes to gardening and the benefits of it. So all of those small things add up and over time you are making a bigger difference than what you can imagine. So I wanted to make sure that I said that on camera because I think that a lot of times whenever you get overwhelmed or maybe you're doing something it's not working out or you're failing, it can feel discouraging and you might think to yourself, well, why am I even doing this? It doesn't even matter. I could just go to the grocery store and buy those tomatoes or I could just throw my food scraps in the trash. It'd be so much easier, but no. You're not gonna do that because you've already made it this far in this video. You care and you want to homestead. So I hope that you feel encouraged to get started and know that you are not the only one that has some of these feelings and that it's normal to kind of question yourself and say, well, why am I not just doing the convenient thing? But you are making a difference and Mother Earth thanks you, I thank you, the other homesteaders around the world who share these same passions are sitting here cheering you on, Thank you for your work and your family is too because now you're able to provide for them and be more self-sufficient in the long run. So with that, let's give you a brief little tour. If you didn't watch our other tour video yet, I'll link that below so that you can go back and watch it. But now this is what our space looks like with drywall. It is a lot brighter in here than I was even envisioning. I'm really happy that it's bright because we really only have three windows in this main living space. So we have the window that's over here and this is where the kitchen sink's gonna be. We're gonna have cabinetry all along here and we're gonna have an island and then on this side over here we have this double mold unit and then we have our French doors but other than that we really don't have any windows in this living space this window right here you're not gonna be able to see it because there's gonna be a door we actually only had the drywallers hang and finish in the living space because we aren't yet ready in the garage we still have a little bit of work to do so this is still insulation but they'll eventually come back and hang and finish here. If you remember in my tour video, I was sharing that this little room here is a pantry. Now it looks more like a pantry than it did in that first video. We're gonna have a little coffee nook here, and then this is a pocket door that goes into the pantry. If we go in here, you can see our little attic door, so that space is gonna be unconditioned. And then this little nook is gonna to be to store some of my canning goods. So this is actually a two by six wall. And to take advantage of that space, we added this little nook. So we'll be putting some shelves in here and I'll be able to put canning goods right there. If we come down the hall, you might remember that the bathroom's here to the right. This room is pretty dark in comparison to the other rooms because we didn't plan for a window in here. The back portion here is where the shower is and we're gonna be using Latacrete there so they don't put actual drywall there. It's like a, a foam board that we're gonna be installing. And then over here is the primary bedroom. Once again, a lot brighter than what I was initially envisioning. It's just, you know, a square box, nothing too special. We did put two little nooks on either side of this door. This is going to be a barn door. So we're gonna basically have like two sliding doors that slide open. And then I'll just show you how those little nooks turned out so you can see. So the idea with using this space in this wall is that we can hang hats or belts or jewelry, whatever there. And then kind of same thing over here is we, we can hang some of those small things. This little space here is the laundry nook. This also is going to have some sliding doors on it. We're actually gonna do sliding bifold barn doors. So I came across that idea on Pinterest and I thought that that would look really good here and work really well. We lowered the ceiling in this space so that we could take advantage of the space above it by accessing it from the back room. I'm really happy that we did that because we really don't need the space above that for our washer and dryer. This last room is the office slash guest bedroom slash maybe future nursery. Who knows what this room will transform into over the next few years. 
but it is relatively small compared to the primary bedroom. We did size it so that you can fit a full size bed in here, but it does look a lot smaller. I hope you enjoyed that little sneak peek. Before I sign off officially, I want to show you my onion seeds because they are looking so good. And I wanna just show you what they look like because that is my number one plant that I wanna grow really well this year. And I'm excited that they are doing well. The topic of using the space you already have to get started with your hobbies, we had to move the shelves into the utility room because we thought they were gonna drywall out here in the garage as well. And so now this space is full of stuff and it also has my onion seedlings. So I asked the project manager, AKA Alex, if I could plug my light into this outlet and that is my grow light here. It's just one of these like bendy ones. Um, I'm eventually gonna bring my whole grow setup over here, but for now this works for just these. I have it off. Um, let me show you what it looks like on. So this is what it looks like on and then my little plants fit under it perfectly. But here are the little onion seed lanes. They're looking really good and healthy. I wanna come back and give them a little bit of a trim today and um, hopefully they continue to be super healthy. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you have some ideas on how you can get started with either new homesteading hobbies that you wanna try out or just get started wherever you are at. I really appreciate it and I will see you on the next one.